Hello viewers, in this video lecture, today we are going to talk about the module Fundamentals of Energy Science. In this lecture today, we will deal with Lecture 3, New Emerging Technologies. In the previous lecture, you have learned about alternate energy resources. So viewers, here are the important topics which will be discussed in this video energy storage, solar dryer, electric vehicle, vertical axis wind turbines. Lecture 3 New Emerging Technologies Several new and emerging technologies were gaining prominence and had potential to reshape various industries. Here are some of the new emerging technologies as of energy storage. Let us understand what is energy storage. Energy storage is the capture of energy produced at one time for the use at a later time to reduce imbalances between energy demand and energy production. A device that stores energy is generally called an accumulator or battery. Energy comes in multiple forms including radiation, chemical, gravitational potential, electrical potential, electricity, elevated temperature, latent heat and kinetic heat. Energy storage involves converting energy from forms that are difficult to store to more conveniently or economically storable forms. Some technologies provide short-term energy storage, while others can endure for much longer. Bulk energy storage is currently dominated by hydroelectric dams, both conventional as well as pumped. Grid energy storage is a collection of methods used for energy storage on a large scale within an electrical power grid. Common examples of energy storage are the rechargeable batteries which stores chemical energy readily convertible to electricity to operate a mobile phone. The hydroelectric dam which stores energy in a reservoir as a gravitational potential energy and ice storage tanks which stores ice frozen by cheaper energy at night to meet peak daytime demand for cooling. Green hydrogen from electrolysis of water is a more economical means of a long term renewable energy storage in terms of capital expenditure than pumped storage, hydroelectricity or batteries. Fossil fuels such as coal and gasoline store ancient energy derived from sunlight by organisms that later died, became buried and over time were then converted into these fuels. Food which is made by the same processes as fossil fuels is a form of energy storage in a chemical form. The following list includes a variety of type of energy storage. Let's see. Mechanical methods. Energy can be stored in water pumped to a higher elevation using pumped storage methods or by moving solid matter to higher locations. Gravity batteries. Other commercial mechanical methods include compressing air and flywheel that convert electrical energy into internal energy or kinetic energy and then back again when electrical demand peaks. Hydroelectricity Hydroelectric dams with a reservoir can be operated to provide electricity at times of peak demand. Water is a stored in the reservoir during periods of low demand and released when demand is high. The net effect is similar to pumped storage but without the pumping losses. Pumped hydro at times 
of low electrical demand excess generation capacity is used to pump water from a lower source into a higher reservoir when demand grows water is released pumped hydro at times of low electrical demand excess generation capacity is used to pump water from a lower source into a higher reservoir when demand grows water is released back into a lower reservoir or waterway or body of water through a turbine generating electricity reversible turbine generator assemblies act as both a pump and a turbine usually a francis turbine design compressed air compressed air energy storage uses surplus energy to compress air for subsequent electricity generation small scale systems have long been used in such applications as propulsion of mine locomotives the compressed air is stored in an underground reservoir such as a salt dome flywheel flywheel energy storage also abbreviated as fes works by accelerating a rotor a flywheel to a very high speed holding energy as rotational energy when energy is added the rotational speed of the flywheel increases and when the energy is extracted the speed declines due to conservation of energy next solid mass gravitational changing the altitude of solid masses can store or release energy through an elevating system driven by an electric motor or generator studies suggest energy can begin to be released with a little as one second warning making a method a useful supplemental feed into an electricity grid to balance load surges thermal methods thermal energy storage is a temporary storage or removal of the heat sensible heat thermal sensible heat storage takes advantage of sensible heat in a material to store energy seasonal thermal energy storage also abbreviated as STES allows heat or cold to be used months after it was collected from waste energy or natural sources latent heat thermal latent heat thermal energy storage system work by transferring heat to or from a material to change its phase a phase change is the melting solidifying vaporizing or liquefying such a material is called a phase change material also abbreviated as pcm materials used in lhtes often have a high latent heat so that at their specific temperature the phase change absorbs a larger amount of energy much more than sensible heat let's take a bit about cryogenic thermal energy storage air can be liquefied by cooling using electricity and stored as a cryogen with existing technologies the liquid air can then be expanded through a turbine and the energy recovered as electricity carnot battery electrical energy can be stored thermally by resistive heating or heat pumps and the stored heat can be converted back to electricity through renkine cycle or britten cycle this technology has been studied to retrofit coal fired power plants into fossil fuel free generation system coal fired boilers are replaced by high temperature heat storage charged by excess electricity from renewable energy sources next we have electrochemical methods rechargeable battery a rechargeable battery comprises one or more electrochemical cells it is known as a secondary cell because 
its electrochemical reactions are electrically reversible. Rechargeable batteries come in many shapes and sizes ranging from button cells to megawatt grid system. Chemical methods Power to gas Power to gas is the conversion of electricity to a gaseous fuel such as hydrogen or methane. The three commercial methods use electricity to reduce water into hydrogen and oxygen by means of electrolysis. In the first method, hydrogen is injected into the natural gas grid or is used for transportation. The second method is to combine the hydrogen with carbon dioxide to produce methane. Hydrogen The element hydrogen can be a form of a stored energy. Hydrogen can produce electricity through a hydrogen fuel cell. Green hydrogen from electrosynthesis of water is a more economical means of long term renewable energy storage in terms of capital expenditures than pumped storage. Hydroelectricity or batteries. Next, let's take a bit about methane. Methane is our simplest hydrocarbon with the molecular formula of CH4. Methane is more easily stored and transported than hydrogen storage and combustion infrastructure like pipelines, gasometers, power plants are mature. Methane combustion produces carbon dioxide and water. Now power to liquid. Power to liquid is similar to power to gas except that the hydrogen is converted into liquid such as methanol or ammonia. These are easier to handle than gases and require fewer safety precautions than hydrogen. They can be used for transportation including aircraft but also for industrial purposes or in the power sector. Biofuels There are various biofuels such as biodiesel, vegetable oil, alcohol fuels or biomass can replace fossil fuels. Various chemical processes can convert the carbon and hydrogen in coal natural gas, plant and animal, biomass and organic waste. In short, hydrocarbon suitable as a replacement for existing hydrocarbon fuels. Examples are biodiesel, methanol, dimethyl ether and syngas. Now aluminium. Aluminium has been proposed as an energy store by a number of researchers. Its electrochemically equivalent 8.04 AH per centimeter cube is nearly four times greater than that of lithium. Energy can be extracted from aluminium by reacting it with water to generate hydrogen. Boron, silicon and zinc have been proposed as energy storage solutions. Other chemical. The organic compound non-boronidine converts to quadra dry cyclane upon exposure to light, storing solar energy as the energy of chemical bonds. A working system has been developed in a Sweden as a molecular solar thermal system. Electrical methods like capacitor. A capacitor originally known as condenser is a passive two terminal electrical component used to store energy electrostatically. A capacitor can store electrical energy when disconnected from its charging circuit. So it can be used like a temporary battery or like other types of rechargeable energy storage system. Capacitors are commonly used in electronic devices to maintain power supply while battery change. Now let's take a bit about superconducting magnetics. Superconducting Magnetic Energy Storage, also abbreviated as SMES, stores energy in a magnetic field created by a flow of direct current 
in a superconducting coil that has been cooled to a temperature below its superconducting critical temperature. Now, what is solar dryers? Let us understand what is solar dryer. Solar dryers are devices that uses solar energy to dry the substance. Especially food, solar dryers use the heat from the sun to remove the moisture content of food substances. There are two general types of solar dryers, direct and indirect. Direct, direct solar dryers exposes the substances to be dehydrated to direct sunlight. Historically, food and clothing were dried in the sun by using lines or laying the items on rocks or on top of tents. In this system, the solar drying is assisted by the movement of the air like wind that removes the more saturated air away from the items being dried. More recently, complex drying racks and solar tents were constructed as solar dryers. One modern type of solar dryer has a black absorbing surface which collects the light and converts it to heat. The substances to be dried is placed directly on the surface. These dryers may have enclosures, glass covers and vents in order to increase efficiency. Indirect. In indirect solar dryers, the black surface heats incoming air rather than directly heating the substances to be dried. This heated air is then passed over the substance to be dried and exists upwards often through a chimney, taking moisture released from the substances with it. They can be very simple just a titled cold frame with a black cloth to an insulated brick building with active ventilators and a backup heating system. One of the advantages of the indirect system is that it is easier to protect the food or other substances from contamination whether wind blown or by birds, insects or animals. Now electric vehicles. Let us understand what are electric vehicles. An electric vehicle generally abbreviated as EV is a vehicle that uses one or more electric motors for propulsion. It can be powered by a collector system with electricity from extra vehicular sources or it can be powered autonomously by a battery, sometimes charged by solar panels or by converting fuel to electricity using fuel cells or a generator. Electric vehicles include but are not limited to the road and rail vehicles, surface and underwater vessels, electric aircrafts and electric spacecrafts, electric drones. The electricity may be stored in a vehicle using battery, flywheel or supercapacitor. Vehicles using internal combustion engines usually only derive their energy from a single or a few sources, usually non-renewable fossil fuels. A key advantage of electric vehicles is regenerative braking which recovers kinetic energy typically lost during friction, breaking as heat as electricity restored to an onboard battery. Let us understand what are various sources of electricity for electric vehicles. There are many ways to generate electricity of varying cost, efficiency and ecological desirability. First is connection to generator plants. Direct connection to generation plants is a common among electric trains, trams, trolleybuses and trolley trucks. 
ऑनलाइन इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल कलेक्ट्स पावर फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिक पावर स्ट्रिप्स बरीड अंडर द रोड सरफेस थ्रू इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन सेकेंड ऑन बोर्ड जनरेटर्स एंड हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स जनरेटेड ऑन बोर्ड यूजिंग अ डीजल इंजिन डीजल इलेक्ट्रिक लोकोमोटिव एंड डीजल इलेक्ट्रिकल मल्टीपल यूनिट ऑल्सो एब्रिवेटेड एज डी ई एम यू जनरेटेड ऑन बोर्ड यूजिंग अ फ्यूल सेल फ्यूल सेल व्हीकल जनरेटेड ऑन बोर्ड यूजिंग न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी न्यूक्लियर सबमरीन्स एंड एयरक्राफ्ट कैरीज एंड रिन्यूएबल्स रिसोर्सेज सच एज सोलर पावर सोलर व्हीकल्स थर्ड ऑन बोर्ड स्टोरेज These systems are powered from an external generator plant nearly always when stationary and then disconnected before motion occurs and the electricity is stored in the vehicle until needed now let us understand what are the various components used in electric vehicles first is lithium ion battery most electric vehicles uses lithium ion batteries lithium ion batteries have higher energy density longer life span and higher power density than most other practical batteries complicating factors include safety durability thermal breakdown its environmental impact and cost lithium ion batteries should be used within safe temperature and voltage ranges in order to operate safely and efficiently increasing the battery's life span decreases effective cost one technique is to operate a subset of the battery cells at a time and switching these subsets now let's discuss about electric motor the power of a vehicle's electric motor as in other machines is measured in kilowatts electric motors can deliver their maximum torque over a wide rpm range that is revolution per minute range this means that the performance of a vehicle with a 100 kilowatt electric motor exceeds that of a vehicle with a 100 kilowatt internal combustion engine which can only deliver its maximum torque within a limited range of engine speed efficiency of charging varies considerably depending on the type of charge and energy is lost during the processes of converting the electrical energy to mechanical energy usually direct current also abbreviated as dc electricity is fed into a dc or ac inverter where it is converted to alternating current electricity and this ac electricity is connected to a three phase ac motor for electric trains forklift trucks and some electric cars dc motors are often used in some cases universal motors are used and then ac or dc may be employed in recent production vehicles various motor types have been implemented for instance induction motors within tesla motor vehicles and permanent magnet machines in the nissan leaf and chevrolet bolt let us understand what are the various type of electric vehicles ground vehicles a pure electric vehicles a pure electric vehicles or all electric vehicles is powered exclusively through electric motors the electricity may come from a battery battery electric vehicle solar panel solar vehicle or fuel cell fuel cell vehicle second hybrid electric vehicles a hybrid electric vehicle is a type of hybrid vehicle 
which combines a conventional internal combustion engine system with an electrical propulsion system. The presence of the electrical power train is intended to achieve either better fuel economy than a conventional vehicle or better performance. Third, plug-in electric vehicles. A plug-in electric vehicle is an motor vehicle that can be recharged from any external source of electricity such as wall sockets and the electricity stored in the rechargeable battery packs, drives or contributes to drive the wheels. PEV is a subcategory of electric vehicles that include battery electric vehicles also abbreviated as BEVs, plug-in hydric vehicles, PHEVs and electric vehicles conversion of hybrid electric vehicles and conventional internal combustion engine vehicles. D. Range extended electric vehicles. A range extended electric vehicles, REEV, is a vehicle powered by an electric motor and plug-in battery. An auxiliary combustion engine is used only to supplement battery charging and not as the primary source of power. On and off road electric vehicles. On road electric vehicles include electric cars, electric trolley, buses, electric buses, electric motorcycles, scooters, personal transport, neighborhood electric vehicles, golf carts, milk floats, forklifts. Off-road vehicles include electrified all-terrain vehicles and tractors. Rail-borne electric vehicles. The fixed nature of a rail line makes it relatively easy to power electric vehicles through permanent overhead lines or electrified third rails, eliminating the need for heavy onboard batteries. Electric locomotives, electrical multiple units, electric trams, also called street cars or trolleys, electric light rail system and electric rapid transit are all in common use today, especially in Europe and Asia. Since electric trains do not need to carry a heavy internal combustion engine or large batteries, they can have very good power to weight ratio. This allows high speed trains such as France double deck TGVs to operate at a speed of 320 km per hour or higher and electric locomotives to have a much higher power output than diesel locomotives. In addition, they have higher short term surge power or fast acceleration and using regenerative brakes can put braking power back into the electrical grid rather than wasting it. Maglev trains are also nearly always electric vehicles. Airborne electric vehicles. Since the beginning of the aviation, electric power for aircraft has received a great deal of experimentation. Currently, flying electric aircraft include manned and unmanned air vehicles, seaborne electric vehicles, electric boats were popular around the turn of 20th century. Interest in quite and potential renewable marine transportation has steadily increased since the last 20th century as solar cell have given motor boats the infinite range of sailboats. Electric motors can and have also been used in sailboats instead of traditional diesel engines. Electric ferries operate routinely. Submarines use batteries charged by diesel or gasoline engine at the surface. Nuclear power, fuel cell or Stirling engines to run electric motor driven propellers. Now vertical axis wind turbine. Let us understand what are turbines. 
a turbine is a rotary mechanical device that extracts energy from a fluid flow and converts it into a useful work. The work produced can be used for generating electrical power when combined with a generator. A turbine is a turbo machine with at least one moving part called rotor assembly which is a shift of drum with blades attached. Moving fluid acts on the blades so that they move and impart rotational energy to the rotors. Early turbine examples windmills and water wheels, wind turbines. A wind turbine is a device that converts the kinetic energy of wind into electrical energy. Wind turbines are an increasingly important sources of intermediate renewable energy and are used in many countries to lower energy costs and reduces reliance on fossil fuels. One study claimed that as of 2009, Wind has the lowest relative greenhouse gas emission, the least water consumption demands and the most favorable social impacts compared to photovoltaic. Larger turbines can contribute to a domestic power supply while selling unused power back to the utility supplier. Turbines are manufactured in a wide range of sizes. Let us understand what are the various types of turbine. Horizontal axis wind turbine, large three blade horizontal axis wind turbines also abbreviated as HAWT with the blades upwind of the tower produce the overwhelming majority of wind power in the whole world today. Vertical axis, vertical axis wind turbine also abbreviated as VAWT. It is also an advantage when the turbine is integrated into a building because it is inherent less stable. Let us understand what are various types of vertical axis wind turbine. The seven years wind turbine is a drag type of vertical axis wind turbine. The Darius wind turbine is a lift type vertical axis wind turbine VAWT. Revolving wind, revolving wind turbines or rotating wind turbines are a newer category of lift type vertical axis wind turbine. It has many advantages like omnidirectional uh, vertical axis wind turbine may not need to track the wind. Gearbox replacement and maintenance are simpler and more efficient because the gearbox is accessible at the ground level instead of requiring the operator work hundreds of feet in the air. Now let us summarize what we have learned today. We have learned energy storage, solar dryers, electric vehicles, vertical axis wind turbine. So I suppose you must have had a good learning experiences watching this video. So keep watching and enjoy learning. Thank you.